Hello, my name is Neil Ayn from Skyway Software, and in this screencast, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the project initialization and bootstrapping tutorial that's available for My Eclipse for Spring 8.5. The only requirements for this tutorial are that you must have either a evaluation version or license version of My Eclipse for Spring 8.5, which is available from the MyEclipseIDE.com website. This tutorial is available within the My Eclipse for Spring help system. And you can also find this tutorial within the educational materials section of the MyEclipseIDE.com website. So let's get started with the tutorial. The goal here is to get a project bootstrapped as quickly as possible so that I can immediately start focusing on development and I don't have to spend time actually setting up the project with all of the dependencies and all of the spring configurations necessary uh, prior to actually being able to start some real work on the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new project called My Spring Project. I'll select Finish, select Yes, and this at this point in time this is just a standard Eclipse project but nothing in here is specific to Spring. It's basically just a stock web project and now what we're going to do is we're going to bootstrap it uh, so that uh, it's now a spring web project and we do that by right clicking on the project and selecting my eclipse going to the add code add spring code generation capabilities and that will pull up a wizard which will walk me through the process now the defaults in this wizard allow me to automatically just click finish here and it will immediately scaffold or excuse me it immediately bootstrap the project with the conventions that are represented within the wizard however we're actually going to briefly walk through the wizard in order to, to uh, get a better understanding for what it's going on behind the scenes so first and foremost do you want if you use the spring nature and you like using the spring nature in your project you have the option of adding the spring nature from within this wizard and then you actually have the option of specifying for each layer of your application the web layer the service layer DAO layer and the domain layer whether or not you want code generation enabled where you want that particular code to be generated in terms of which project you want to generate it to and specifically which folders within that project you want to generate it to so the next several panels are all very similar and um, uh, they just are configuring a different layer of the application the runtime dependencies panel is a very useful panel where it basically allows me to automatically add all of the dependent libraries that I need in my project and I can specify whether I want these added as Maven dependencies, class path containers, or whether I want the libraries actually copied directly into my project. I can also specify which version of Spring I want to use and I can decide which libraries and which dependencies I want to include or exclude. When I click on next it gives me a summary screen, tells me what, it's, what the wizard's going to do for me and I click finish and it proceeds with the initialization. The bootstrapping process is done and now let's take a look at what actually was done for me. So the first thing that you'll notice is that the uh, class path containers were automatically added to my project. So I have all of the libraries that I need in order to be able to build and run my Spring application. And I can actually expand one of these class path containers and see the specific libraries within those containers that are going to be included within my project. The next thing that you'll notice is that the generated folder was created for you and this is where any source code that is actually generated for you by My Eclipse for Spring it will be put into this generated folder for me. Uh, since I haven't done any development yet with My Eclipse for Spring this folder is empty. The next folder is the resources folder and this is where all of the Spring, Hibernate, and JPA configuration files and so you'll notice that there are several uh, Spring context files, there is a DAO properties file, my log4j properties, my Hibernate properties, and even my persistence you know, XML files were automatically created for me. They're pre-configured, ready to go. I can immediately start focusing on application development. I don't have to spend time setting all of this up. If we take a look at the web root folder, I can expand the uh, web int folder and I can see that my application context file was automatically created for me and the web.xml file is in here as well and it's automatically pre-configured. It's automatically configured with all of my spring configurations that are needed. And The last thing I want to point out is that you can actually switch to the My Eclipse for Spring perspective and you will notice that a spring DSL 
is now visible from within the Project Explorer that allows me to take advantage of a lot of additional code generation capabilities in my Eclipse for Spring. Thank you.